Amen. Church, amen. 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 Let us stand together, turn number 529. Oh, how I love Jesus. Number 529, oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first stands a two. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his breath, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. He tells me what my Father had in store for every day. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. He tells one whose loving heart can feel my deepest who in each sorrow bears a part. That none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Amen, amen. Remain standing, please. If you have your Bibles, I invite your attention this morning to the third chapter of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, and we're taking a brief departure from our series from the Gospel of Luke. And we'll resume with Luke on next week in Luke chapter 21. But this morning we'll look at Ephesians chapter 3 for our thoughts this morning. Ephesians chapter 3, and I want to begin reading with verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Holy Scripture. Ephesians 3 verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before, in a few words, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which, is, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it now has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy prof apostles and prophets, that the Gentile should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. To me who am less than least of all saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all people see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent 
that now the manifold wisdom of God might be known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask you, do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. May the Lord's rich blessing be to his red word. May it be sanctified in our hearts. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we bow before you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We invoke your presence. We pray that you would fill this place with the, with the presence of the Lord. And we would ask, Father, that you would open our eyes, that we might see and behold glorious, magnificent, and splendid truth uh, from your law. Now speak to us, that we might see Jesus in all of his transcendent majesty and glory. For it's in his name we pray and give thanks. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you this morning for a few moments from the subject of the mystery of God's love. The mystery of God's love. There's a story about an old country preacher who had a teenage son, and it was getting to be about time for the boy to select an occupation, to choose a profession. So like many young men, he wasn't in a hurry to do it. He kind of liked staying at home with his mom and his dad, and mom was washing and cleaning and pressing his clothes and fixing his meals every day, so he wasn't in a big hurry to leave home. But his father thought it was about time for him to choose an occupation. So the father decided to practice a little experiment. He went into the boy's room one day that the boy was out, and he placed on a table in the boy's room a King James Version of the Holy Bible, a silver dollar, a bottle of whiskey, and a Playboy magazine. An old preacher said, I'll just stand back here and I'll hide behind the door, and when he comes in, I'm going to believe by faith that depending on what he picks up, it is going to determine what his occupation is going to be. So the preacher said, if he picks up the Bible, then maybe he'll become a preacher like me. That'll make me very proud. He says if he picks up the silver dollar, then that means he's going to become a businessman. That won't be too bad because it takes the good book, the song book, and the pocketbook to finance the ministry. So to have another pocketbook won't be a bad deal. He says, but if he picks up the bottle of whiskey, that probably means he's going to be a no good for nothing bum, a drunk along Skid Row. And he says if he picks up the uh, Playboy magazine, He's going to be nothing more than a skirt-chasing womanizer. So the old preacher stood anxiously behind the door until the boy came. So finally he heard the door open, the boy whistled, and he bounded up the steps, and he went into his room. And first he didn't see the table. On his way out, he saw the table. And so the boy looked at those four items on the table. They caught his eye. He came over, and he, he picked up the Bible, and he put it on his arm. And the preacher said, man, he's going to be a preacher. But to the preacher's other chagrin, he picked up the dollar and he put it in his pocket. And the preacher said, he's going to be a preaching businessman. And then he turned like he was going to go out of the door and he turned back and he picked up the bottle of whiskey and he turned it up and took a big swig. And then he picked up the Playboy magazine and he started flipping through it until he came to the center fall. And the preacher said, Lord, have mercy with great disgust, with great 